What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Oh, shit. What are we doing? Oh, five minutes with an indie, episode five. Once again, shout out to itch.io for the bundle for racial justice and equality. Shout out to them. I don't think it's still available, but I mean, that's on y'all. Y'all should have y'all should have got it like a while ago. Remember how I was telling y'all like buy it, buy it, buy it. And if I wasn't, I bet you y'all know somebody who was. So you know, but all's well that ends well. Um, let me just turn on this light. Yo, okay, that's fine enough. I'm mad bright. I need to adjust these lights. There you go. Probably didn't even need the lights, but whatever. I right, um so yeah I know the deal. Uh heading over to oh uh, shit, that's me. Heading over to itch.io right now as we talk. Uh going forward, I will be putting my fucking uh what's some shit's called? Uh timestamps. Yeah. Timestamps because I had a couple people hit me up on YouTube saying, you know, they love it, but obviously, you know, for some people who might just want to check out a specific game, it makes sense to just kind of put, you know, timestamps for that specific game. So uh, I'm going to do that. Um, five minutes games list. Bang. Last episode, we played Did I Fall Asleep, Cube Fall, Kids, Over the Moon, Spoken Magic, Word Forward, Rip Pants at Work, and Monster Pub Chapter 3. I will tell you right now. Kids, definite cop. Word forward, definite cop. Rip pants at work, definite cop. Um, I got to spend more time at Monster Pub. But in terms of value to what you're getting and experience-wise, yeah. Kids, rip pants at work, word forward. Those are the ones. Those are the ones. All right, so let's get into it. You got a random number generator or picker, excuse me. Did I... Control shift B, bang. All right, let me get this uh get this up. All right, we here. We in full effect. All right, let's do it. Um 1 through 59. Let's start on page 18. And we're going to go with game 20 on page 18. Okay. Page 18, game 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Slam Fighter 2, the fighting game where the pain is in your is to your pride. Excuse me. I fucked that all up. Uh, Shit, I'm using a... Oh, I'm not going to use a controller today. Slam Fighter um, by Team Dog Pit. Shout out to them. Let me write this down. Slam Fighter by Team Dog Pit. And we got this at the five minute mark. Bang. Oops, that's not five minutes. That's a whole other nine. All right, let's do it. I'm going to download this. And we're going to run it. Sorry, I'm uh I usually use my A73. And I just picked up a, a webcam. So I'm getting used to the new webcam um placement. And uh Yeah. I don't know if I had an excuse or a reasoning for that, but yeah. Alright, let's get into it. Slam fighter. This better be dope. I feel like it's gonna have a dope soundtrack. All right. Hey. Hey, Google. Set timer for five minutes. Some seek to destroy it. Others use its power. Slam I couldn't even read that. Two. Tutorial? Nah, we're going to do no tutorial. Let's just jump in the ship. Fight through five rounds with the world's elite trash talkers to beat the game. Use arrow keys to select a fighter. Press enter to confirm a... Yo, Dietrich? First of all, Tatsufumi, Bunny, 
Dafulana, Sergey, uh, an unlock a lockable or unlockable character, and Dietrich. I gotta pick Dietrich. I mean, you know. Let's go. Let's go. Ah oh, shit! Black on black crime out the gate. That's fucked up. Why they gotta do that? Why they gotta do that? Not cool. When Tatsufumi declined to take Dietrich's Dietrich's life after besting him in a no holds barred slam fight to the death, B stag threw his right hand man off a cliff. His body was never recovered. Remember, this is Slam Fighter 2. That means some shit happened on the last one. Six months after his apparent demise, Dietrich contacted Tatsufumi to warn him of B Stag's plan to obtain the Philosopher's Burn. I see what they're doing. In aiding Tatsufumi in his quest to destroy the Philosopher's Burn, Dietrich hopes to atone for the countless innocents who got told as a result of his actions. Got told what? Dietrich, 19, 32 in anime years. Marital status, eligible bachelor. Million dollar boat. Eyebrows on fleek. Style, high attack, low defense. So, glass cannon. Bunny. Oh, didn't read that. I will destroy even you if that's what it takes. Okay. I've gotten a lot better since last time. Yeah. Get ready to slam. My turn. Um, don't hate. Appreciate. Oh shit! I should have did the tutorial. You suck. I'm jealous of all the people that haven't met you. Yeah. Wow. Are you always an idiot? Or is it just when I'm around? Ooh, that's rude. Uh, a loser says what? No, see, you're supposed to say what, and then I'm supposed to say... All right. Now, for those who've played in the past... Hold on, let me... For those who've played, who've seen the past episodes, I've always said indie games need to do a better job of explaining things beforehand. And then we get a game that has a tutorial, and what do I do? Ignore it. Dietrich, before you go any further, you must prove your strength to me. Watch as I show you how to properly deliver an insult. <laughs> Do you follow all that? You have to type out an insult to the rhythm one letter at a time at the top of each beat. Now I want you to deliver a retort by copying my insult back at me. Oh yeah? Oh wow, so I'm I typing. Your wit is even duller than your fighting passion. <sighs> okay. So it's a typing game. S T U P I D. Stupid. You're stronger now, but you're still just as ugly. Yeah. Don't forget, our opponents will be more ruthless than any you have ever known. Slam fighter. Okay, let's get into it. I know what I'm doing now. Don't underestimate. Yep, yeah, whatever. Let's go. I'm about to fuck her up. She's gonna be like, "Hey, thank you for the follow, player Samuel Kale, 84, 84. So that means you are 30, three, 30, no." 35 Brazilian Portuguese hey what's up player well Brazilian you know what I mean what's up how y'all doing stop likes bunnies dislikes stupid Fumi Kun it's not like okay all right let's do it shout out to the Brazilians man time to waste on fools. beautiful culture very beautiful I've gotten a lot better since last time 
Okay, so. Okay, so I'm calling her stupid. Do you even know what that means? Yeah. She has to copy stupid. I, uh, that's what she said. I'm gonna do the breakdown right after this. What's up? What's up? Talk to me. I don't know what makes you so stupid, but it really works. <laughs> Gotcha. I knew before you told me you were from the West Coast, because there's a two-hour delay before you get a joke. Oh shit! Ow. Don't you have I try to type her ugly. Oh, that's Ow. racist. First of all, I don't like that joke. Wow. What's up, Sam? Samu Samu Kale? Samu Kale? I meant to do that. Or is it just when I'm around? Oh, shit. You act cute to try to hide that you're actually a really boring person. Uh -uh. Mm, that's fucked up. Flat ass. Wrap it up. Put that bitch in a body bag. Over with. Da, da, da. All right. Um, let me pause this real quick. All right. Um, the game was. Where we at? The game was Slam Fighter Two. Hold on. Relax. The game was Slam Fighter Two by Team Dog Pit. Shout out to them. Oh, nope. Cancel. Shout out to Team Dog Pit. Uh, I like it. Is it worth five minutes? Hell yeah. This shit's kind of dope. The fact that it, like, if it wasn't for this trailer right here, I would have been completely taken aback by what I was expecting when it came to this actual game. And then once they started talking a little bit more and it was slam, okay, like that's how... You know, slam poetry. That's how, oh, he slant, you know, that's how, whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. And then they mixed in the typing aspect with the music aspect that came out of left field. Like, most fighting games usually have a very dope fighting soundtrack. You need one because, you know, you're playing the same content over and over. In terms of replayability, there's probably no ga game genre that has it like fighting games in terms of it's it's built in it's the main purpose right so knowing that and knowing that out of nowhere they just hit you with the hey gotta type insults on the beat and it's kind of cute because you find yourself realizing damn i might not be that good at insulting people with text words than i thought but it's dope. I like it. I like it. I like the characters. Voice, the voice acting. I wish they hit me up because Dietrich ain't black. I know he ain't black. So they could, you know, at least get a brother to take care of that. But outside of that, and that's a joke, by the way. Outside of that, damn, I never put the desktop sound back on. Um, but excuse me. But outside of that, it was dope. I like it. Team Dog Pit presents Smack, Slam Fighter 2. Go play it. it re the regular price is $5.99. Or four ninety nine, excuse me, I don't know how to read. Yeah, that was worth it. That was worth it. Definitely worth it. All right, let's get into it. Let's do it. Game number twenty nine on page eight. Game number twenty nine. Mythos reawakening. Let's see. Um, from the corner of your eye, you can see it, but you dare not look directly. Oh, shit. That was like Slender Man. Ooh. This is $7.99. Originally $20, guys. So, think about it. The bundle for racial justice and equality was at the minimum $5. 
five dollars we are already 30 percent past that amount with this game at 7.99 i don't even know if that's an accurate number i'm just throwing out percentages but that's nuts because all right let's let's play it seems like an asset pack though i hope i'm able to play this 707 megabytes god damn all right. Well, while he's doing that, let's go back in here. What up, Samuel? You said you had a question. You never answered it, bro. What's up? What's up, Papa? Um, but yeah, let's uh download this. Eight seconds. Damn, y'all remember the days when like 700 megs used to take like hours to download? <sighs> We're fucking spoiled, man. We're fucking spoiled spoiled l spoiled spoil spoil replay um okay so it appears as if this stuff is all assets and i knew this i knew this because i know that there were only games and playable projects in this pack which is fine let me, uh, so you download the zip and in the zip itself is just loads of PNG files, which I'm assuming you load up into whatever you're doing. This motherfucker here is scary. I never want to see him before again in my life. Um, pre-constructed rooms. Hmm. Let's read a little bit more about this. Yeah. So asset pack page as a sequel to the hugely popular mythos horror Resource set. Mythos Re Reawakening presents you with a huge number of assets to craft your horror masterpiece. The resources contain heroin can be here in oh, can be freely mixed and matched with the resources from any PV games resource set. You can find more here. Okay. So Pioneer Valley. Shout out to Pioneer Valley. I forgot to timestamp this one, but whatever. I'll hit it with uh, uh, Mythos reawakening by pv games at let's say we started this at 17 nice okay so basically all of these games or no this game here tough to kill the last journey i'm assuming all these they look like they all play the same you download the resource packs or you purchase them and yeah you can basically put all this stuff in your game and help build whatever it is that you're trying to do. It looks to me like it's a visual, like a visual tabletop RPG game, which is dope. Because sometimes people need those visuals. Um, you are free to use the resources in any game making software that you want. You are free to edit the resources to fit your needs. You are free to use the resources in commercial projects. See, that's pretty dope. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. So if you guys want some uh, dope assets... Go hit up pvgames.itch.io and check out Mythos Reawakening. Let's get into it. All right, page 24. Page 24, game two. Ooh, okay. Okay. Page 24, game two. 2000 to one, a space felony. Murder mystery courtroom drama set on an interplanetary. I don't know why I I don't I don't know why I forget how to read when I'm a space felony or how I came to value my life in murder mercilessly. Excuse the fuck out of me. Uh, by National Insecurities. That's a cute name. So what we got? We got uh two thousand. One, a space felony by, who this by? National Insecurities. Okay, we're sitting at 21. Perfect. All right, let's get into it. Let's download that bad boy. So let me... um. Go into my documents and my downloads because unfortunately I gotta download, I gotta delete uh what's that shit called? I gotta delete uh Mythos Awakening. And I don't mean shit like that. I mean shit in the sense of 
what it was. Not what it was, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Jesus Christ. God. All right, so space felonies downloading as we speak. Boop. All right. Unzipping, and here we go. Lego. Boom, 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 boom. Humble original. Oh shit. I don't hear any audio. The game contains camera flashes, which can be disabled. Oh shit. Oh wait, there goes the music. Look sensitivity, invert. Once again, people who play with inverted shit are weird. Camera flash. Put that on there. Camera screenshot. Hell yeah. Video. Okay. Let's go. Hey, Google. Set timer for five minutes. Hello. Yes. Mal, abort mission. Return to Earth. Why? Repeat. Abort mission. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Mal? Crew life signs are stable. They are living. Abort mission. I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Mal? I am going through a tunnel. Return to Earth. Son. How he do that? How he uh. do that? Oh, I like this. The record begins on May 10th in 2068 as you intercepted the USS Endowment two years into its six year journey to Saturn. mission was to piece together what happened following the loss of communication one year prior. If you determined that the Mal AI was the cause of the issue, then it was your responsibility to deactivate him. Oh, I like those sound effects. The lack of AI will halt BSE Ray, but allow me to broadcast something over my OO channel. Oh, this is the trippy. The record states that upon entering the ship, you tested your rotation thrusters. You then endeavored to discover what happened to the communications unit located on the exterior of the ship. You pushed the button to open the door of the engineering bay. I did? Oh shit, he did. Okay. You entered the engineering bay, the workstation of Sun Guan Yin. However, there was no sign of the engineer's body. You used your sharp understanding of linguistics to decipher the following. Manual, meaning done by a human. Emergency, meaning sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance. Lever, meaning thing which is pulled. The lever's upward position implied that a human did not encounter a sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance, and so did not pull the thing. Why are you gotta talk to me like that? The power turbine rests within a tank of coolant, its casing cracked as if it had been purposefully struck. 
The power turbine rests within a tank of coolant. It's casing cracked as if it okay, had been Okay, so it's kind of like you're taking pictures and as you're taking pictures... You found the severed end of a safety tether in the engineering bay, which indubitably had been attached to Sun Guan Yin. The ventilation door was open, exposing the bay to the relentless celestial abyss. Can we shut this? That should look crazy. Yo, if this was in VR, I'd be throwing up all over the place right now. It'd be, it'd be a done deal. Game over, man. Okay. So his tether was there. He got blown out. Damn. That's crazy. I see your homeboy right there, but dang. Upon entering the pod bay, you noticed that one of the maintenance pods was absent. Yeah, it's not there. That's just like a robot face. Oh shit, those are constellations, bro. On this. The screen indicated that the pod had been absent for over a year. You pushed the button to recall the pod. Don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. Is that what he was doing? I have been analyzing humor patterns, and I have assembled a joke. Would you like to hear it? I'll tell you. <clears throat> One, two, eight ha 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 ha. Did you understand the joke? It is the greatest joke ever, by my calculation. You discovered the body of Dmitry Kizov clinging to the outside of the maintenance pod, with his safety tether still attached. The Russian crew member seemed to have removed his helmet and asphyxiated. What? You ascertained through investigatory procedure that the pod was locked. The outer valve would not turn, indicating that it was locked, and the door said locked on it indicating that it was locked. Furthermore, there seemed to be no manual locking mechanism on the outside. You discovered the body of Dmitry Kizov clinging to the outside of the maintenance pod, with his safety tether still attached. The Russian crew member seemed to have removed his helmet and asphyxiated. Upon the left claw of the maintenance pod was a brown substance, which you described as possibly rust. But you also note that, due to your keen detective skills, you determined that it was most certainly blood. Son, what the hell happened here? Son, what happened to that dude? Son, this shit's nuts, bro. In the central spine of the ship, you discovered Valeria Asimov's discarded EVA suit. The helmet showed clear signs of damage from a blunt object, which it seems to have easily withstood. Oh, that one was bold. Manual, meaning done by a human. Emergency, meaning sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance. Lever, meaning thing which is pulled. The lever's downward position implied that a human had encountered a sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance and pulled the thing. Oh, do I die if I go out there? 
probably right. I don't know. You're in die. The recording shows that you discovered the body of one of the American crew members, Rakesh Watcher, his neck broken, hanging by a safety tether outside of the airlock. Damn. Once I was alone, I carefully removed the air from the ship. I had no desire to disturb the placement of the assets aboard. I don't think I really put the five minutes on. At this point, I don't know if I... This is my central processing chamber. Whoa! I designed it. Here, I have the freedom of movement to perceive you from any angle. You did not yet feel ready to begin your cross-examination of Mal as you had not yet examined the communications unit on the exterior of the ship. I get it. I get it. Basically, I'm sent up here to figure out if this AI unit on this damn spaceship shuttle thing went bonkers. And if it went bonkers, can I prove it? And if I can, why did it go bonkers? This shit going down with this type of music is nuts. Dudes is dead everywhere, son. This is a dope game. I'm going to quit that just because that's a dope game. That's a dope game. Yeah, y'all know what it is. All right, that was, let's see, 2000 to 1, A Space Felony by... Uh, PV, right? Or is it a PV song? No. National Insecurities. National Insecurities. A first-person detective thriller. I like it. I like it. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. Shout out to that game. Alright. Let's go back. Um, game number 12 on page three. Okay. Uh, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Pagan, autogeny, Aut autogeny, autogeny, Aut autogeny. Uh, fuck it. I was going to ask how do you pronounce, but I'm going to just say autogeny. Autogeny? Autogeny. Autogeny is an experimental first person open world role playing game set in the digital ruins of a largely abandoned MMORPG. It is heavily inspired by long forgotten bargain bin 1990s adventures games and by a general ethos of use user hostile design. Features include. I'm not even going to read that. Let's get into it. It kind of reminds me of you. Um, you guys ever heard that story? It was supposed to be like a creepy pasta, but it was like a real thing. So I don't know if it counts. It was um, the premise of it was this dude who used to play. Was it RuneScape? I don't know if it was RuneScape. I don't know what. It was one of those like Java based RPGs where do you know, where you'd be online talking to other people, whatever. This game was just like abandoned or some shit. And he ended up finding someone on it and then like it, it it's just weird. I'ma find the I'll try to find the oh this comes with a manual. Should I try to read it here? Uh, monsters, there are many strange beasts. Most monsters take physical damage. These can be injured by any weapon. Ghostly monsters take faith damage. Monsters with metal components or armor, they require piercing. Okay. Okay. Um, they do have some instructions here, but it's very, very loose. A very loose user manual. 
All right, let's get into it. This is, oh, wait, is this 36? Pagan by, there you go, Pagan, Autogenie. Let's see. Author Oleander Garden. That's crazy. Thirty-seven. All right, let's get into it. Ooh, we're gonna play windowed. Input. Oh, let me give you all the input. Um, WASD fire space jump. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Made with Unity. You know how I feel with Unity. When things are made with Unity, I'm already logging on to user Vivian. Please wait. Hey, Google. Set timer for five minutes. Sensitivity's nuts. Uh, K skills, estrogen, the fuck? Inventory, jump. Oh. Food core, emporium. The uh, sensitivity is real high. What's this? What was that? Left arm? Oops. Okay, left arm. The hell that means. Hey, can I bunny hop? Nope, no bunny hopping. That's a machete. I could notice a machete anywhere. Oh no, that's a mystic blade. I just got some estrogen. Shout out to the estrogen. Poetry. I said, you know it's me. Oh, that's weird. That stuff isn't in my... Oh, was it up? Oh, okay. I, I still don't know how estrogen is a fucking skill, but... You know? Am I a girl in this game, maybe? Money, I think. Yep, money. Wonder what I'm gonna use that for. So it controls just like your basic FPS. <laughs> um, WASD is what I'm rocking with. <sighs> Tarot card, labor voucher, labor voucher. Damn, if only I read the manual. Except, like I said, the only difference is sensitivity is nuts. I'm talking about, like, we got to be, like, at the 1800 DPI. I don't even know what the hell that means, but. Ooh, okay, that's. Let's go this way. They definitely uh, got the, hey, more poetry. They definitely got the 90s first person. That motherfucker looked crazy. Is that Stone Cold Steve Austin? See, I was expecting to turn around and something to fucking be there. That motherfucker looked crazy. Is that a foot?
they definitely got the 90s aesthetic down in terms of like the way games looked then and the way that they just felt they felt they felt like new ish you think something will come out there try me try me bitch oh that was outside I'm not ready to go outside Uh oh. Maze time. Ooh, estrogen. Weird place for some of that, but alright. Mazes. Mazes were very, very popular. I hear noises. I hear noises that way. Not going that way. Um, mazes were very, very like the whole like um labyrinth type feeling where it's like stop. Where it's like you don't like you there's no there's a ceiling there's like four walls like i'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it i'm gonna just do it let's just do it let's see what's here <gasps> oh shit the shot to kill him uh say what what you gonna do sucker what you gonna do sucker uh Oh, you think you dope because you got an 18 pack, huh? I don't know how to. What is escape? How do you exit out? Those games where they don't like escape ain't the regular. You know what? All F4 always works. Uh, that game, what was it called? It was called, let's see, Pagan, Pagan Autogeny, 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 one of those. Is it worth the five minutes? Hell yeah. I mean, just for the idea that, you know, you could possibly be playing a game that kind of gets you into the feeling of those old school 90s adventures games. Uh, shout out to this game. Shout out to Oleander Garden and uh, definitely read the manual. I got like like System Shock type vibes from it in terms of like the, you know, the vibes, you know. All right, bang. Let's get into it. Page 33, game number 10. Okay. Page 33. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fair winds and following seas. A short meditative game about the exploring about the exploring the senses while sailing the sea. Okay. Um fair winds and following seas. Let's get that in our list, guys. Um let's see. Fair winds and following seas by did I say Matthew McConaughey? No. Avon Elia McConaughey. Shout out to Avon Elia McConaughey. We're sitting at 45. All right. All right, let's do it. Download. While this downloads. Oh, is this. See, I'm going to do the full color joint. This looks like an RPG tabletop game. Let's look at the page. Fair one, sell the seas with your fellow crew. Satisfy the whims and of the captain and explore all your senses in this nautical adventure. Explore the elephant garden and the Jessfield Key or puzzle over why the Silver Coat Patrols hired your crew for this strange mission. Fair Winds and Following Seas is a game for two to six players in the game. You play the crew of a ship hired to complete a task your employer destination and the details of the task are determined randomly 
and play includes taking turns describing six sensory experiences for each trip and sharing a sea shanty with the rest of the crew. That's dope. As anyone who anyone who's ever played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you know what it's like. Shout to Zeno Octopus, but you know what it's like to play uh, a game where they got sea shanties in it. Carry your ship and crew from the mission to mission, which records with records of each character's journey. Blah blah blah. Five dollars. So yeah, like I said. All right, let's get into it. Fair winds in the following seas. I could have just read that. To play, you will need these rules, the print and play cards, six tokens, riding implements. Setting sail. Each player should choose a role. If your character has not been given a name, come up with one and write it on the sheet. The roles have no mechanical effect, but they will accumulate memories from each voyage they are on. No one plays the captain, though. They may show up at some point to complicate your voyage. Ah. Oh. The roles are sailor, first mate, doctor, quartermaster, navigator, helms person. Okay. So watches, like watches as in like looking, not as in like watches. Senses. If you're stuck, think about describing the ship, the crew, the food, the weather, the ocean, the port docks, the wildlife, the time of day. This is kind of dope. This is dope. Ah, let's get these shanties. I mean, I'm gonna get these shanties. Ready? Boom. Ah, uh, now we, now we set out. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me. I gotta. Let me set out. Okay. Now we set out for the captain to please, one with the sea and the ship and our mates. Our pockets are empty, but full all our plates. Pray we'll have fair winds and following seas. No? Alright. Let me, y'all gotta let me get, let me get y'all with the, um, let me get y'all with the, uh, sea sounds. So y'all know. Y'all ready? There you go. A dark cloud beneath, I feel my chest seize. What monster or demon has picked up our tail? What breaches the surface? Tis only a well. Pray we'll have fair winds and the following seas. One day we'll return on a homebound breeze. The wind brings us out on the ocean so wide. We bring ourselves back with our coin and our pride. Pray we'll have fair winds and following seas. What calls in the dark? What obscure mysteries? Rack our minds with the promise of... Okay, no, I can't do this anymore. Uh, these are dope, though. I like this. I like that. Especially if you got like a... All right, chill out. Especially if you got like a whole group of two to six individuals shantying together. Nice. That was dope. Like, so like I said, y'all know how it is with the tabletop games. Can't really review it because I can't really play it. But this seems dope. And this definitely seems worth the five minutes. So go check that out. Fair Winds and Following Seas by <laughs> Even Elia McConaughey. Shout out to her. Or him? I'm going to say her. It sounds like a her. Shout out to them. That's the easy way to do it, right? All right. Uh, game number 29. On page number three. I feel like we did that already. Let's see. Am I right or right? No, I'm not. Silicon Heroes. Make a computer from scratch. Okay. Silicon Heroes by Pleasing Fungus. Nice name. Dope. All right. All right. Let's see. We sitting at 50... Yeah, 50. Bop, bop, bop. All right, let's download this bad boy. Let's see. While this downloads, let's look at the game page. Build complex electronics from a variety of simple components like adders, latches, and multiplexers. Travel back to the 60s to Silicon Valley's very first setup and do your best to keep the whole thing from imploding. Oh, so this is a puzzle game. This is a puzzle game. Shit. 
Now we've had a few puzzle games during this series. We've had is that a booger? No, that's not a booger. We've had Cube Fall, which got me sick. We've had uh Word. I got the shit right here. We had Word Word Forward, which was dope. We had a couple more. I can't remember. They were in early episodes. Yeah. Um Puzzle games haven't, you know, but let's see what we can do. It's the 60s in the heart of California's Santa Clara Valley. One day they'll call this Silicon Valley and it'll shake the world. But right now, couldn't read it. Straight out of school, I wasn't having a lot of luck finding work. When Laszlo offered me a job at his new company, I jumped at it. I still have no idea what to expect, but it's time to get started. Silicon Heroes. Silicon, silica, silicon, silicon. <sighs> okay. Um, hey Google, start a timer for five minutes. Dana, good to see you. I'm excited to get to work. Our new Zerocom is the company I have dreamed of since I was still in the old country. The others are not here yet, but let us see what we can do on our own. To start, why not check to make sure our adder modules are working? Connect the module so that the adder's output is two. You can click and drag between the rectangular ports to connect the modules together. Um, I mean... Sure. Good, a promising start for our work. I know you are new, but I have great confidence. When you took my personality test, I detected an astonishingly high mental temp, a mind well above the ordinary kind. I will give you all the time you need for that spark to fully light, and when it does, Dana, you will be a beacon for us to follow. That's dope. I wish people still did that, especially employers. This can get very intense, as you can see over here where we get to that stuff. Now that we have seen a single adder module work correctly, let us wire them together in sequence. Connect modules so that the adder outputs three. You can tidy up wiring brass by control dragging them. I know I have not fully explained what we're doing here, Dana. This time is not yet uh, right for the great gene to be revealed. For, okay, all right. So, I don't know how I did it. Is it because these two? Oh, it kind of tells you. The sum inputs added together, number two, which then brings it here, which then adds it to that, and that's a three? I guess. Hello, Dane. I'm Carol Laszlo Fabricated. I, I don't know, bro. Laszlo hired me to run the fab, uh, the module fabricator. The bad news is that we ain't got no fab yet. But the good news is that I've got a lot of experience with Jerry rigging hardware. First, test out the adder modules, place and connect modules so that an adder outputs four. Don't worry about running out. I ain't expecting any part shortages for now. Okay, so. So we're doing four. So this plus this, and then this plus this equals two, right? So then if I take this sum, bring it to this adder, then add one there, I get three. Then if I take this sum to that, and then get one out of there, I get four. I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. This is pretty nostalgic for me. It reminds me of the days I spent playing hooky from school. So cutie, huh? The other thing I've got for you is this configuration tool. You can use it to tinker with number modules, like the one on the left. Just right click on them. Oh, try configuring and connecting modules so that an adder outputs four. So if I change this to two, right? And then I go bang and then bang. Okay, maybe my mental temperature is higher than I thought. And you see now, Caroline is an engineer of the highest quality. The job market was unjust to her. So many judged by education, sex, skin tone, or other 
petty distinctions. That is the genius of my test. I care only for the temperature of a person's mind. For now, would you mind very much showing me what you have done with the parts Carolyn made? Please configure and connect modules so that it add outputs five. Okay, so I'm gonna get one to do. Th oh, I get it now. I can get how it can get tricky because like if I get this one to two, right? See, it's almost like you gotta treat it like a baby. Cause if you try to add too many, you won't be able to, just trust me. The goal was three plus, huh? I ain't gonna go back and figure it out. Hey, you're Dana. Cool. I'm Alicia. Alicia? 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 Supposed to be a programmer, but you guys don't seem to have a computer to program on. So I'm working on extended memory instead. So we just have the machine. When you plug a number to this reader module, it'll spit out the value stored in that. Stop. You can see what's in this memory on the far right. Place configure and connect modules. So have to read output six. So if it's one, it outputs nine. So I needed to read 10. All right, I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Don't even need to play the game anymore. Don't even need to play the game anymore. I'm, I'm clearly just, I'm clearly just at a level that I didn't even know I possessed. It's 1499 guys, 1499. Whoa. That was, that was a chunk. That was a chunk of change. 1499 Silicon Heroes. Silicon Heroes by um, Pleasing Fungus. Pleasing Fungus. Nice. Shout out to them. I like it. Definitely worth the five minutes. Definitely worth a lot more than that. If you're a nerd and you like fucking with numbers, which we all are because I mean, look what we do. We sit behind computers. Uh... If you just like something to kind of fucking tickle your cerebellum while you at work, this is it. Like I said, I don't even know how I was able to do what I was doing, and I don't even know how I was doing it right. But taking a look at some of these motherfucking shits, oh my god. I hope this ain't one of those games where at the end they'd be like, congratulations, you secretly know how to code now. But... If this is how like certain people see numbers and wiring and computing and shit like that, programming, then this is, I can see how people love it. So shout out to that game, Silicon Heroes. I like it. Definitely worth the five minutes. How many we did today so far? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do 28. Page 28, game number one. Ooh, that's the first game number one. This is a celebration. All right, Chronicles of the Space Jammer. This looks like a tabletop. Oh yeah. First of all, the artwork on this is amazing. Four dollars. So um hold on. Let me thirty six what the what is the name of this game? Because this shit got a long ass title. Let's see. More information. Um, Chronicles, Chronicles of the Space Jammer, Volume 1, 36 Space Jamming, what though? 36 Space Jamming what? Oh, 36 Space Jamming Backgrounds for Troika. Okay. 
So I don't know how, how much reviewing I'm be able to do with this one, but um, who is this by? This is by R Rook. What we at? We at an hour. Hour one minute. Okay, let's download it. I mean, let's just see what happens, right? I mean, it's a PDF, so... Chronicles of the Space Jammer, Volume 1, Space Jamming Freebooters. Let's see. Welcome to Space Jammer, a periodic zine of 90s-style adventuring in phase C space. I don't know why I said that word like that, but y'all know what it is. This isn't the space of our physics-bound modern world, but a magical space. Loosely based on early modern ideas. Babe, you ain't have to keep that light on. Thank you. Uh, where gravity is always Earth normal until suddenly it's not there at all. And everyone carries their own atmosphere with them when they take off into the void. While inspired by the 1989 box set Spelljammer AD&D in space from TSR, it's designed to work to play with Troika Numinous Edition. It requires a copy of that game. Okay, so Troika, which is all uh, available by Melsonian Arts Council. Oh, it's a book. So it's RPG. RPG, and it looks like this is basically additional assets for said RPG. Um... They got like loadouts and skills for, I'm assuming, enemies. I don't think you could be these characters. Oh no, maybe they have. I think they have. I, I, I digress. It could be a lot of shit. I can see the appeal of, of, of these tabletop games though, man. Like, I just, not I. I mean, I just, I would definitely be the goblin dance artist. You've studied the movement arts of a hundred worlds and no ceremonial, ecstatic, recreational, and aesthetic. Goblin artists don't get enough respect, though. And you're tired of low-paying chorus gigs, so you're here on Brawl looking for whatever work you can land. So, I'm going to be a stripper. Space Pixie. Hmm. Oh, backgrounds. Those Are those the backgrounds part? I'm stupid. Backgrounds. I thought it meant like, like literally like, oh, here's some art. Here's some backgrounds. Um, shout out to that game. Like I said, I can't play it, but uh, shout out to them. 13. Game page. Let's see. Game page 42. Whoa. Um, so 42. 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The NPC with a thousand faces. A pen and paper RPG supplement. Here we go again, guys. Like I said, it's it's a real thing. Like I think if anything, this bundle helped me realize that tabletop games aren't going anywhere. It's still they're still very much alive and there's motherfucking a need for them. Now I won't download it because I don't want to just have a whole bunch of random PDFs for tables on my shit, but here's some of the info on it. First of all, this is by Forgotten Workshop. It it's happened to all of us. The players decide to speak to an NPC you didn't prepare for. The most you have is a name and maybe even a race, but you're drawing blanks. Who is this barkeep? What do they really want in life? What are their struggles? The NPC with a thousand faces is a technique I've built to generate NPCs from my over 17 years of running tabletop games. With a menagerie of systems. It's fast, it's flexible, it's focused, it's table tested. Rescue yourself from those awkward moments that threaten to pull players out of the experience. Or hand the book over to them to assist them rolling up a fascinating new character that goes beyond a sheet with a class and list of equipment and powers. So listen. <laughs> um, 
I used to play. What was that game? I used to play um, SmackDown. Was it for what was? I think it was SmackDown versus Raw for Xbox 360. And I say that because I think it was X. X I think it was this right here. Hold on. I'm gonna mute this shit. So you see the shit? There's the suplex. Uh -oh. John Cena looked nuts. So I used to play that, right? <laughs> Excuse me. And I used to play that with a bunch of 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 my friends. Shout out to all of them. And we used to have our calls, you know, our created wrestlers. And one of the things that always set our created wrestlers apart was there were a couple of us who we built backstories with these dudes, you know, coming from a long lineage of submission artists. So and so decided it was time to step out from behind the curtain and make a name for himself. And with that, he's become the da 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 da. da right? That's how we used to do things. And we used to always have that one homie, shout the ant, who would have like a seven foot two, hundred pound guy who can power bomb you, right? We'd be like, that don't make sense. Like, what is the lore behind him? Like, he looked like Snoop Dogg. Like, what are you doing? Uh, this, this, I mean, not doesn't prove, but this helps further, helps further? This helps to further the argument that the more info you have about characters, regardless if they're real or not, is super helpful when it comes to just the believability of it all like this is dope like look at this character flaws i love how to start with a character flaw let's see what my character flaw would be um what kind of dice do i need for example let's consider a superhero whose parents were gunned down in the alleyway damn batman oh d100 d100 roller okay here we go Let's roll a D100. Roll. I got 79. So that means my person would be rebellious. Ooh. Damn. Let's see. Their ambition would be... Is that 100? Their ambition would be... 36. Be adored and loathed. Be adored or loathed. Okay. Their armor is actually pretty fun. Their armor would be 86. Poorly strapped. Oh, furs, hide, and bone. Heavy armor. Damn. Location 80. Rocky outcrop. Filtered light. And the clothing would be custom fit. Heavy. Okay. Huh. That's dope. I like it. Shout out to these dudes. Uh, I don't currently play tabletop games, but if I did or if I ever do, I'm glad that I purchased this humble bundle by itch.io. The bundle that raised over, I believe it was $8 million for racial justice and equality. So glad that I paid that. Not $8 million, but I'm glad I paid to buy this because it's dope having access to all those things. And maybe, hey, I might use someday. Uh, 53 and uh, page 53 and game 22. Okay, I think this is going to be the last one. La the next project will be the last project. Okay, what was it, 22? Uh, let me start at the bottom. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can You Make the Best Garden by Luke Parker. Shout out to Luke Parker. Uh, what are we sitting at? We're sitting at hour 10. All right, let's download this bad boy. Download, unzip, play. Shit, they just told it to me like it is. Uh, Windows, look at the game page for a second. 
the best guard in a small, fast-paced, arcade-style gardening game. You, you 60 seconds. You 60 seconds. That's, first of all, you 60 seconds. You 60 seconds to build a garden suitable for the best garden award as fast as you can. Okay, $5. So this seems like one of those games that, you know, it's supposed to be quick. One of those games that goes for playthroughs more so than it goes for um, longevity in one playthrough. That made sense? That made sense to me. All right, let's play Window. Let's see. W left, left mouse fire. Right mouse fire. Fire, huh? A lot of fires. Is there a escape, like get the fuck out of here button? Because that happened. Okay, whatever. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's do it. This game is best garden. Best garden. We got music? Hello? Super confused. The control seems sticky. Alright. Alright. Let's <laughs> let's let's just start this over with. Let's just uh let's just you know Let's just let's just try this again. All right, let's just try this again. Cause, all right. Okay, all right. It says vertical is W and S. So there is music. Okay. Move cursor, arrow keys. Choose item, WSAD. Place item. Okay. Delete, delete. Um, okay. I don't usually give games three tries. I don't usually do that, but best garden. Y'all right now y'all ain't I don't know. Okay. I ain't gonna even do the tutorial because I'm afraid this shit's gonna break on me. Okay. This shit still seems sticky. Okay, so that's water. Is that rock? We can't go out like that. We can't go out like that. We can't go out. I was thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me. I was thinking about ending every one of these episodes with doing a random page and then me picking the game on that page I want to do. 
right? It sounds like a good deal, right? Let's do it. Let's do it that way. 14. Luckily, every time I've played, I've always had games that or projects that made me feel, excuse me, made me go like, yeah, this is dope. But, uh, Yeah, I can't just let it end like that. Um, um, Adventures of a Radish spring on me. A game about messy dates. I think I found... Oh, no. Here we go. Hyper Gauntlet. Legacy of Nozzle Thruster. Yeah, we're going to do this one. Ooh, Monster Pub Chapter 2. I played Monster Pub Chapter 3 last week, or like last week, last episode. It was, uh, it was good. It was good. All right. Let's do it. We're going to do Hyper Gauntlet, Legacy of Nozzle Thruster 3 by Nicholas Udell. We are at the 1 hour and 17 mark. Okay, let's do it. Uh, 64 bit. Don't forget, go follow the YouTube channel over, hold on, let me get the big chat. Bang, where's that? Bang, right there. Go follow that. That way you can see all these videos in sequence. You can also go back and see the ones that we did previously and uh, check out anything else that I'm uh, doing or getting into. Okay. Use arrow keys to dodge red or blue obstacles. Increase your multiplier by passing adjacent to an obstacle if you're next to an obstacle you're if you're not next to an obstacle you're a multiplier resist resets i don't know why i can't talk okay all right let's do it this is hyper gauntlet by nicholas udell okay graphics quality it's, damn the options are good bad or ugly there ain't no <laughs> that's funny there's no shooting. So this is just dodging, guys. We're just dodging. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I like that. Hey. Yes, okay. That's dope. That's dope. That score. Yeah. Respect my 
I thug. Press slow time to retry. There's a there's a slow time button. You see, I didn't even know that, bro. Makes sense, because there's some. There's some that I, I can see my, I can't get to. Oh no, I got the wrong power up. Oh no. I don't know what just happened. I'm so scared, bro. Did a lot better that time though. Didn't really seem like it. I thought I had easily like 800,000 points. Alright, that game was Hyper Gauntlet Legacy of Nozzle Thruster. Uh, let's see. By. Give Hyper Gauntlet 10 seconds of your time, and if you're not grabbed, then fair enough. Move on. Yeah, yeah, nah. Yeah. Uh, this is the definition of a game where. You don't got to do a lot, but what you do do, just do well. Just do well. Do well, polish, get it, and you have Hyper Gauntlet 3, the Nozzle Buster Broomstick. What was it called? Um, Hyper Gauntlet Legacy of Nozzle Thruster 3. Yeah, there you go. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. All right, so let's see. How many did we hit today? Uh, Slam Fighter Mythos Reawakening, a Space Felony. Yeah, we hit uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Damn. Ten? Ten? Okay. Ten's a good amount. Ten puts at an hour 25. I mean, you would think 10 times 5. Fit. Ah, we're not that far off, right? Yeah. Um, so shout out to all these, uh, developers, shout out to all the indie developers. Once again, shout out to itch.io for putting together this wonderful, wonderful bundle, wonderful bundle. I think I'm going to make like, eventually when I get done with this, this might be my new thing. I think I might like start going on here and just seeing what I stumble across because we would hate for five minutes with an indie to die down after this, right? Of course we would, but there's just a plethora, a plethora. And I wonder how many of these games are actually already in the bundle. You know? So, I mean, if you go on itch.io, you can sort games by free. 
a PSX light horror game about ramen. Oh boy. I'm definitely playing this game. <laughs> that looks amazing. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Yeah, no. And uh, look at this. A good look at 253,000 results for free games. That's bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Y'all know what it is. That's it for episode five of Five Minutes with an Indie. And yeah, you know. Uh, thank y'all for checking it out. Once again, subscribe, like, follow, do all those wonderful things. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 7. I might alter that a little bit, though. I don't know if I might go 7 to 9 or do 8 to 10. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to look into it. Uh, no biggie, though. At the current date, at the current time, it's 7 o'clock. So that's all that matters. And, uh, and yeah, and stay tuned guys, stay tuned. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. I'm a good follow. If I do say so myself, go follow me on all the other shit and, and holla at your boy. Um,